Yeah, welcome to an overview of sugar catabolism, bringing all these pathways which are of relevance in a bigger picture. Yeah, sugar catabolism, or you could also say glycolysis as a paragon sugar catabolic pathway. Um, you know that there are a couple of different pathways and sometimes it's, uh, sometimes people get lost in all these pathways. You have the Entmeyerhof Panas pathway. You have the Entner of pathway or you have the phosphoketolase pathway, pentose phosphate pathway. And sometimes it looks like that all are really separate. And in this video, I want to show you how they're connected and what are the common principles. Now, to summarize overall the pathway, the big picture now, the good news is It is so easy because at the beginning you look like, of course, metabolism at the beginning, uh, catabolism or metabolism looks like being so complicated. Anabolism maybe it's a bit more different because if you go then to poor metabolism and so on, you have tons of different enzymes, but catabolism at the end, it's so easy. So let's look at catabolism with hexoses what options do i have what have we talked about of course we have more options but what have we talked about and that how this all fits together and you will see what are the key molecules or what is the key molecule and this makes then life simpler for you so of course we start now with glucose we talk about glycolysis at the end and then i have different options option one is start on the C6 level, on the sugars level, oxidatively or uh, non-oxidatively. If I don't oxidize at this level, I phosphorylate, have an isomerase and end up with fructose 1,6-phosphate. This is one basic option. Another basic option is that I start with glucose, oxidize it twice and I have then a pentose and to arrive at a pentose from glucose i need to do these oxidation reactions otherwise i will not arrive at the pentose how this pentose look like depend and you remember we had then an epimerase and we have uh, then the xylulose phosphate but at the end it's a pentose so now let's look at this pathway where i have this non-oxidative start i have fructose 1,6 bisphosphate and of course what's happening then you remember it i have the aldolase splitting fructose 1,6 bisphosphate into dehydroxyacetone phosphate and to in, into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. What is very important, you got lost if uh, for you in, in, in your hint brain, the structure formula should enlighten because these names are just names, but the structure formula then at least is, as soon as you are at the C3 level, hell because then at the same time you know what's happening so you should learn it based on the structure formulas if you just learn it based on the names it doesn't help you at all and you will of course inevitably forget that uh, as soon as you have written the exam basically we have two molecules glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate because we have this isomerase and dehydroxyacetone phosphate can be transferred in glyceraldehyde phosphate and then it's glycolysis we oxidize and so on and we end up at pyruvate so here we have our oxidative steps on this scheme i didn't depict the atps on this scheme i didn't depict the nadhs i just wanted to know the key steps in these schemes so here we have two molecules of pyruvate this is one way how uh, you can metabolize it this is the m meyerhof panas pathway now another option is as we have said oxidize glucose start with an oxidative step so the first step of course is we come to um, phosphogluconate so the first step is of course always an, a kinase but then uh, the next step is then the oxida oxidative step and we have this phosphogluconate our aldehyde group at the end of the glucose is oxidized to a carboxyl group Now you remember, um, I have an oxidative decarboxylation and I end up with a pentose, for example, with xylulose. And you remember, then we can go 
to um, produce our uh, heterofermentative lactic acid fermentation. Here we could go further and do our homofermentative lactic acid fermentation or ethanol production. Now, if we have our pentose, we can go to the pentose phosphate pathway, so we can generate whatever sugar we like, more or less, in the pentose phosphate pathway. Or we could use our phosphoketolase, not the aldolase, the catalase splitting the pentose in a C3 unit, in a C2 unit. And the C3 unit, again, is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Here it is again. And the other product which is produced is acetyl phosphate. Of course, an inorganic phosphate gets in and so on, but I already told you the phosphates uh, and NADHs are not included in this scheme. And from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is the same as for glycolysis, the of panas pathway, I end up with pyruvate. And the other molecule is acetyl phosphate, and you remember heterofermentative lactic acid fermentation. It depends on where you come from, whether you then produce acetate or ethanol in this case. Now this is also called the phosphoketolase pathway as this enzyme here, the key enzyme here is the phosphoketolase. And if you look now at this scheme, you have the feeling something here is missing. And as this is so empty there, let's put another pathway there. This then goes uh, to a substance which is called 2-keto-3-desoxyphosphogluconate. This name is really ugly, but again, <laughs> this, the ugly thing about this name is if you just hear that name and has, have no structure formula associated with this name, it's a real problem. So maybe I make a, a, a second, I, I use a second now to make an excerpt to draw that down and then things look way more nicer. So we said the molecule which is produced here as an intermediate is KDPG. That sounds like an accountant firm, but indeed it stands for 2-keto 3-desoxy phosphor gluconate. That sounds really complicated and this will be a party burner if you tell this name. But the, the point is you're good because you can even write down now how this should look like. So let's start with gluconate. First of all, we start with glucose. So first of all, we need to give them some C's. So glucose, let's distribute the hydroxyl groups. Ta, tu, ta, ta. That's completed. So that's glucose as it's phosphogluconate. We have a carboxyl group here. This is phosphogluconate. And now we analyze what is written here. It is 2-keto. So that's C2, 3-desoxy. This is C3. So we just do what is written here. So what we do is at position 2, there must be a keto group. So let's draw a keto group here. Oh. And at the position 3, the hydroxyl group is missing because it's deoxy. So just, I just take away this 2 here. Otherwise it looks like <laughs> that's a C2. And here the hydroxyl group is missing. So it's just an H. And of course this H at this position stays there. So this is 2 keto, 3 desoxy phosphoglutonate. So we have just copied what's in the name because we know what a keto group is and we know that a desoxy group is just uh, taking away an oxidant. Now if we look at this molecule, if you would just split it at this position here. So this is C1, one, two, three, four, five, six. The molecule you see here is almost pyruvate. You just need to take this electron from this carbon you need to take with you. Then you end up with pyruvate. And as you have taken this electron now from C4 to C3, an electron at C4 is missing. So this carbon is kind of oxidized. Then this must be an aldehyde group because this electron has moved there. So it's not going outside. It's just because it's moved to this carbon. We have a phosphor, a phosphogluconate. And we have the same here. 
and CH2OP. And this is pyruvate. And this molecule, look at this molecule, you know it. It is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And this is your friend. And you have seen that in the structure formula. And you have seen that in a molecule, you would say this name sounds like hell. But if you lean back and take the time to analyze that name, things get easier. So take that time, have a look in the structure formulas. The question which you will ask now immediately is, do I need to remember that? It sounds so complicated. No, the end of the order of pathway, which is the starting point here, is optional. But I wanted to show you simply how, if you go from the, struct the side of the structure formula, the picture gets clear if you just learn the words. It's a nightmare because if you have no idea about the structure, that 2 keto 3 desoxyphosphoglutonate is split in pyruvate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. That's a nightmare. But if you look at the structure, if you start from gluconate, and I say you know the structure formula of glucose, of course, then you automatically know the structure formula of gluconate because you know that a sugar is an aldehyde or a keto group and the oxidized form an Eight has to have a carboxyl group. It's oxidized. And this can only be at the C1 position because there we had the aldehyde group. So you can draw down phosphogluconate. So again, I've forgotten at the beginning to put the phosphate. And then you just go step by step. It's two keto. Okay, I put a keto group at C2. 3-dexoxy. Okay, remove the oxygen at C3. That's it. So you have produced now based on the backbone phosphogluconate, the 2-keto 3-desoxy phosphogluconate. That's cool. So go ahead um, and as I said, it's like an accounting firm. So discuss with your friends then later on of uh, the economics department how cool your uh, lectures are because you talk about molecules sounding like accounting, but they're better than that because it's an internal logic. This is cool. We have now analyzed and we have deduced ourselves. We have, you remember, um, you knew it now based on the structure formula that you directly produce a molecule of pyruvate and you produce a molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate from um, this 2-keto 3-desoxyphosphogluconate. And the next steps are then the same as the steps in the glycolysis. And this pathway is called the Entner daughter of pathway. Welcome to the world of glycolysis. These are the key pathways used uh, in the catabolism of glucose. An overview of all the pathways and of course a warm invitation to have an idea about that. And the cool thing is as your best friend is always there in all pathways you have your best friend glyceraldehyde free phosphate. You see that if you just remember these steps more or less you know all of them. That makes life easier. Again, the major difference was whether our initial steps are oxidative or non-oxidative. And if it's non-oxidative, it's our standard glycolysis. It's the of parnas pathway. And uh, so, of course, glycolysis could be used for all of them, but it's a standard use that for this pathway. And this C6 intermediate is split into two C3 pathways. We have shown it on the charts. And you produce two molecules pyruvate from glucose. Now, if the initial step is an oxidative step, so you come from glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphogluconate, then you can go into the pentose phosphate pathway. This is also called the phosphogluconate pathway. Um, often this is also used to th bring things in the anabolic pathways. Remember, glucose comes in and of course I want to produce energy, but also glucose of course is used for chemoorganotrophs, is used as a starting point for anabolism. And of course these catabolic pathways then branch also out into anabolic pathways and you use substances for producing then other things. As just as an example, we have our phosphoenolopyruvate produced in uh, in the glycolysis um, and we had our erythrose 4-phosphate from our 
pentose phosphate pathway, which is the C4 sugar. And these are used, these tau molecules are used as a starting point for the synthesis pathways of aromatic amino acids, which of course have a, has a couple of steps. So this is not very simple. This is a more complicated, but these are the starting points. So these are the metabolites you use. And it's of course wise using metabolites you have in metabolic pathways as starting points. Another pathway is the phosphoketolase pathway. So here the initial steps are similar to the pentose phosphatase. So uh, you go then uh, into a C2 and C3 immediate uh, from your C5 immediate. 5 xylulose is split into um, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and our acetyl phosphate. And finally, and the Daudorf pathway uh, where you have two C3 units and the key intermediate is the 2K23-deoxy6-phosphogluconate, therefore people also call this pathway KDPG pathway. Um, also there, two molecules of pyruvate are produced, but if you would have a look in the pathway, only one ATP is produced. And this pathway is often used in RK and it depends, the phosphorylation can vary. So it's very interesting to um, understand later on why is an organism, instead of the standard Entenmeyerhoff Panas pathway, where you produce two molecules of ATP using an Enten Daudorf pathway, where you produce one molecule of ATP? But the response is, it's more complicated. It cannot be done in a, in a, in a word. But again, think of yeast. Yeast also can, even in the absence of oxygen, produce ethanol, because at the end it's the ATP yield, and depending on the condition, it could be less costly to use the end of pathway, because you have less reversible reactions going on there, and therefore you need less enzymes, and therefore the flow must be be could be better. So it depends on the condition what pathway is the best. Yeah, I hope, as promised, you believe me now that these pathways are connected. And if you look at them, if you step a bit back, and if you look at them, you see that there are many, many common principles in between, and that things are not so complicated. So again, the advantage is if you start to learn things from structure formulas, you can see how these things are connected. And hopefully, now you believe me that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is your best friend, because it appears in every of these pathways. Thanks again for your attention and goodbye.